Like, oh my god. Oh my god, video. In this video, we will be trying to get ourselves killed. And a chihuahua. That's uh, my wife's idea of the family pet. The dog I picked out for us is Bill, our golden retriever. He's 80 pounds. Now, that is a dog, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I named him Bill because I've got him when Clinton was in office, and as a puppy, he was humping everything. <laughs> but when it comes to dogs, the big ones, the little ones, I have criteria for what is and is not a dog. Here's what is not a dog. Anything that bounces when it barks. <laughs> Not a dog. Anything I can easily drop kick over my back fence. <laughs> Not a dog. Anything that's regularly terrified by a running leaf. <laughs> Not a dog. It's a yapping beanie baby. That's what that is. <laughs> so Richard Simmons of canines. That's all I'm saying. to me. I don't know either. You're a genius. Do it again. I figured out size does matter in the canine brain. Bill, golden retriever, very smart animal. When he was a puppy and I had to potty train him, if he pooped on the living room carpet, I stuck his nose in it. Three times later, he figured out, I'm not supposed to crack here. Next two dogs, same thing. Now the little brain dead chihuahua comes along. She poops on the living room carpet. I stick her nose in it. Three times later, she thinks, oh, I'm not supposed to crack ever. And that's why they shake. <laughs> Another way that trial will prove your lack of intelligence, most dogs know when you find a stick in the yard and you put it in your mouth and you run with it, you put the stick in your mouth sideways. <laughs> I am not kidding. This little idiot dog found a stick about as long as she was. She stuck it in her mouth and run with it, but it was sticking straight out the front. This is all true. We're all sitting on the couch watching TV. She comes running through the house as fast as she can. That stick sticking straight out. And as she runs across the carpet in front of us, for some reason, she decided to quickly look down. Oh, yeah. Stick stuck in the carpet, crammed down her throat. With momentum, she actually pole vaulted over the stick. My girls were like, ah! I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard. And then I thought, damn, if she'd been going just a little faster, I'd have a new pup and a chihuahua on a stick. My wife started going nuts with the chihuahua thing, though. Uh, her little chihuahua, she named Darby. And after about a year and a half of having a little Darby, my wife decided it was time to breed the dog. So my wife got on the internet and found the three-pound stud chihuahua. I don't know how you call anything that's three pounds of stud. But we went and picked up little Jake. He was for sale, and the owner just wanted to get rid of him. So Jake came to live at our house. He was full-grown and ready to go. And uh, not long after that, Darby came in heat. Not long after that, we had three tiny little chihuahua puppies. The two larger ones my wife gave away. But the runt of the litter, the runt from two three-pound dogs, we decided to keep. Little Rusty is now full-grown. He's a whopping 1.8 pounds. And the cool part is he and 80-pound Bill are best friends. I don't know how you can be your best friends with someone who's the same size as your poop. <laughs> My kids question whether I'm funny or not. I pointed that out in the backyard one day. I'm a comedy genius to them now. Like, you know. 
But uh, the other cool part is a little rusty. He picked me over everyone else in the family to bond with. He likes me best. We don't know why. But I kind of like it. I come home, and he runs to the front door, and I pick him up. I take him to my office. I have a little uh, stuffed car. I sit on my desk, and he sits in that car. If he sits just right. It looks like he's driving around my desk. People walk in my office, and they go, it's a rat. Oh, it's a dog. But the bond between Rusty and me has gone beyond just companionship. There's an emotional bond there. Now, what I'm about to tell you has happened five different times, so it can't be coincidence. Now, the three chihuahuas sleep in the bed with my wife and me. And every once in a while, my wife and I will get in an argument. We'll go to bed angry. I know you're not supposed to do that, but we're tired. Little Rusty hears the argument, he knows we're not happy with each other, and apparently he takes my side because at three or four in the morning he will wake up and pee on my wife. <laughs> I am not kidding. It's the greatest thing ever! <laughs> I have the satisfaction of knowing if I go to bed angry with my wife, it's going to be taken care of. <laughs> this is all absolutely true. And about a month ago, I had to get uh, get up early for an East Coast flight. I had to get up at like uh, 3.30. And my wife and I, we'd argued the night before. I wake up, I'm still mad at her. 4 a.m., I'm getting ready to walk out the front door, and I think, you know, I still love her. I gotta go kiss her. So I walk over and I put my hand on her, and I'm like, <laughs> Rusty, my man! <laughs> It's still warm. She hadn't woken up yet. I lean over and I kiss her. I go, honey, I love you. See you later. Rusty pissed on you. Bye! <laughs> Rusty's at the end of the bed just wagging his tail. I'm walking out the front door thinking, this boy, I hope he doesn't teach Bill to do that. We have three daughters, they are 9, 11, and 15 years of age, and they've had three normal childhoods. Uh, most of the things have been uh, just uh, great. Uh, some things have been slightly different because of the ventriloquism. For example, you know, uh, their Barbie dolls actually speak. <laughs> Not when mommy's around. <laughs> Ken, you smell like beer and cigarettes. No, I'm a lot of fun to hang around Toys R Us around Christmas time. Uh, Little boys have been known to run to their parents. Mommy, you know what that G.I. Joe just said to me? <laughs> they will never catch me. Yeah, we try and take family walks as often as possible. On these walks, we always let one kid pick out one dog. One particular evening, we let little Kenna, the nine-year-old, choose. And uh, Kenna uh, seems to be, uh, I don't know, she's got some sort of real twisted sense of humor. We don't know where that came from. <laughs> but also on these walks, we, of course, we have a, a, a leash. And this is one of those big self-retracting leashes where you push the button and it quickly retracts. <laughs> don't beat me to the funny part here. <laughs> So uh, I walk out the front door. I think I'm going to be the first one there, but Kenna is out front already. She has a little Darby hooked up to that leash, and uh, she's about two feet away, and Kenna keeps pushing the button and letting it up. Little Darby's going, tool, tool, tool. I'm like, Kenna, what are you doing? She goes, I I'm trying to make her heal automatically. I'm like, Kenna, it doesn't work. I already tried it. High five. Now we're out in the middle of the walk, and Kenna has a little dog at full extension, 30 or 40 feet on the leash, and apparently she hasn't given up on whatever she's trying to do. Because as we're walking, she keeps pushing the button and letting it up, looking at the dog, looking at the leash, and see the wheels in her head turning. And I'm thinking, what is this twisted little child going to do? And then as we're walking, she pushed the button and quickly and on purpose dropped the leash. <laughs> Do you see the brilliance here? <laughs> the leash then began to chase the chihuahua. <laughs> Big hunk of black plastic skidding across the pavement. The chihuahua stopped. She heard a new noise. She looked behind her. Here comes the leash. <laughs> I will say at this point the Chihuahua was smart enough to know that now would be a good time to panic. <laughs> she took off like a freaking bullet down the middle of the street running as fast as she could. But the leash was slightly faster. 
I'm standing there going, where's the video camera? <laughs> we can win 10,000 bucks. Watch what happens. <laughs> and sure enough, <laughs> of course, my wife and my two oldest girls, <laughs> Kenna and I are rolling in the lawn. high-fiving her, telling her she's a genius. Mommy turns around, sees us laughing. I'm like, oh crap, don't look her in the eye. Look straight down and back away slowly. Rusty will piss on her later. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, you are well. just an awesome audience and we're gonna have some fun. How about so. if we get to the people you came to see tonight? How about that? guy I'd like to introduce to you, I oh, think I audiences that. enjoy it because everyone knows someone like this. You know someone like this in your own family or where you work. Please help me welcome my old friend, Walter. CIA. 
I see you. <laughs> no, this is this is not okay, shady. I'll see it. you. That's not chilly yet. You know the show looks a lot better from the front. <laughs> is the director drunk? What the hell? Yes. What'd that do for you? Look at me. I'm happy. Come on, what were the results of the counseling? Well, at the end of it all, there were two folks who thought I was an ass. And I'm paying both of them. But you are happy to be here. Oh, sure. I did better than last week. Last week, yeah, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We were there. You didn't like that? No. Why not? Everyone in Fort Lauderdale, Florida looks exactly like me. I swear it's like one giant nursing home. <laughs> Isn't that Fort Lauderdale is where they tape a lot of those Girls Gone Wild videos? Well, that's only during spring break. Oh, the rest of the time, it's Girls Gone Saggy. <laughs> and it's Girls Gone Senile. And then it's just Girls Gone. <laughs> you didn't like the weather there, either. Oh, my God, even in the middle of the winter, it's just uh, humid as hell and hot as hell. We got there, I took a shower on Monday. Friday, still not dry. I swear, I grew moss on my ass. Oh! That's what it's going to be. Yeah, I see you soon. Yeah, you said the, the weather changes too quickly? Yeah, I know it changes fast everywhere else in the country, but in Florida, it's ridiculous. What are you talking about? Oh my God, I was standing there on the beach in the sunshine, having a little iced tea. I looked over and I go, ooh, look, a little cloud. About three minutes later, <laughs> holy crap! <laughs> the locals are hanging onto the palm trees. We love it here! <laughs> you dumbasses. <laughs> I say leave it to the Cubans and get the hell out! <laughs> So you want some place a little cooler? Yeah, do you remember uh, we went to Green Bay, Wisconsin? Yeah, in February. It was negative 20 with the negative 30 wind chill. I'd get on stage every night and I'd say, you people are idiots. Did you know the borders are open? Pack up your suburban and get the hell out. And another thing, Green Bay Packers Stadium. What's it called? Lambeau Field. Lambeau Field. No roof. Hello. <laughs> How many weekends during football season is good weather in Green Bay? That would be none. <laughs> Note to self, build a freaking roof. <laughs> we have the technology. <laughs> You talk to the locals in Green Bay, what do they say? <laughs> we love it here. We're a hearty people. A bunch of frozen dumbasses. <laughs> All right, Walter, what about, uh, you, you don't like the humidity, you don't like the extreme cold, you want some place warmer and dry. Yeah, how about uh, when we were in August, we were in Phoenix. August in Phoenix, Arizona. Your agent is a moron. 
You was 112 three days in a row. Well, what do all the locals say? But it's a dry heat. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> a bonfire's a dry heat. <laughs> you don't see me sticking my ass in one of those, do you? <laughs> Your ass is on fire. It's a dry heat. <laughs> I was in Florida. I gotta learn not to frickin' moss. <laughs> All right, did you enjoy being in New York City? Oh, I love New York City. Good. Yeah, it was great. We do shows in Manhattan. About midnight, we get back to the hotel. 